we're gonna have good discussions because people read, so that's, that's about 90% of it. So um, because this is a Thelemic Salon, I'm gonna kick it off with a ritual that some of you guys may not have ever seen. It's called the Star Ruby. Basically, it's a ritual that invokes um, the energies of Pan, and it's super simple. I'll do it. It's just kind of to set the tone. We're not summoning any negative forces here, but it's, it's something that some of these folks might have seen before. So I'm gonna do the Star Ruby, and then I will jump into the lecture, and then we'll go from there. Yopan, 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 Pan, Yopan. 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 Romo yoga is a pismo teletarchi, epidexia sinoke is a pisteria demones, plege gar perimo esterton penti, kai stelio asterton existeke. Sui o fale is gros, eucharistos, io. Apo parus All right, so that's sort of setting the space. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to read uh, a lecture here. I'll make sure the recorder's on because I'm going to put this up on YouTube. It is on. And then after, hey, Andrew, welcome. Uh, go ahead and grab a seat and make yourself comfortable. Um, Andrew's a good friend, teacher at uh, Portland Community College or Mount Hood Community College. And uh, welcome. We're, we just did introductions, but jump in. <laughs> no problem. Um, so this lecture is titled... The Magical Link, The Key to Effective Magic. And then after this lecture is done, we're going to break out doing what's called the World Cafe, which is a methodology that um, you might have seen. Uh, it's basically a way to share collective ideas. All right. So, uh, do with the what should be the whole law. Um, welcome, everyone, to this inaugural lecture of the Ouroboros Salon here at the Temple of the Coiled Splendor. The Ouroboros Salon is a forum for the sharing and discussion of thelemic and esoteric ideas and community. The hope is we'll have rotating, rotating presenters and that we will, can learn from each other and use this approach called World Cafe, which is a method to facilitate group discussion and mutual learning following a brief lecture on a topic. Um, tonight, I'm going to be talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart. It is called the magical link. According to Alistair Crowley, who mm -hmm. defines magic with a K in contrast to stage magic ending with a C, magic is the art and science of bringing about change in conformity with will. He uses examples in book four of a person wanting to rally a nation behind a cause, so the person writes a powerful speech that is published in a newspaper affecting a major political event. Thus for Crowley, any intentfully willed act that is a scientific and artfully done thing to bring about change is a magical act. So something seemingly mundane as writing an intentfully willed speech is as, an act of, is as much an act of magic as summoning spirits to attract wealth or a lover. The key is that the will and the imagination are harnessed with focused intention via bridge to the object of the operation to bring about the desired change. In Magic and Theory and Practice, Crowley provides a number of postulates and axioms for this art and science, but one chapter in particular stands out. In chapter X1b of the Consecrations with an account of the nature of the magical link, he writes, in every operation, a magical link must be properly made. The first requisite is, that the acquisition of, uh, is the acquisition of adequate force of the kind required for the purpose. It is therefore absurd to invoke the spirit of Venus to procure us the love of an empress unless we take measures to transmit the influence of our work to the lady. We may, for example, consecrate a letter expressing our will, or, if we know how, we may use some object connected with the person whose acts we are attempting to control, such as a lock of hair, or a handkerchief once belonging to um, her and so connection with her aura. 
Our talisman thus therefore may be, must be an object suitable to the nature of our operation, and we must have some means of applying its force in such a way that will naturally compel the obedience of the person of, na of the nature we are trying to change. It is only important to remember the essence of the operation, which is to will its success with sufficiently pure intensity and to incarnate that will in a body suitable to express it. So in essence, he's saying that you need some sort of a bridge or a link between your intention and the object, and that it just can't be a matter of your focused thought. You have to have something that creates that connection to the other person. Or it could be object or state of the environment. It's not just a person you necessarily are affecting. <clears throat> the principle of the magical link embodies a very old idea within sympathetic magic known as the doctrine of contagion. This is the idea that previous contact with another person or object means they are forever intertwined and the degree of previous contact is the potential degree of future influence. This is similar to Bell's theorem in quantum physics whereby a particle split and fired from a particle accelerator measured initially and at a distance seem to simultaneously influence each other with no contact. This has been called spooky action at a distance and it contradicts the general law of relativity for it implies that things can have immediate instantaneous influence on one another no matter how far apart. Such ideas are common in shamanic and magical circles but are still considered impossible by the mainstream. But the art of expanding the horizons of the possible is another potential definition of magic. So I'm going to unpack a series of principles which takes Crowley's idea of the magical link above and brings them down into components that make this link more effective. So the first is a physical or virtual bridge. The bridge is some mechanism that connects the person doing the magic to the object of operation. This is, enough, this is in a nutshell what a lot of people think is the magical link, but it is not its full expression. In a love spell Crowley mentions above, he gives the example of a letter and also a hair that can be used by a person to influence an empress. The point here is that something physical bridges the will of the magician to the object one seeks to influence. So some examples, a pencil and paper and newspaper during Crowley's time for political speech and a Wi-Fi enabled laptop connected to social media channels. Both are examples of magical links used to influence people's mindsets by virtue of something that bridges the mind of the magician to the people or the thing being influenced. Another example, a resume and a cover letter that is a bridge between the magician and their desire to influence a hiring manager, or a fetish placed on a door to protect from the evil eye in the case of folk magic. So in every example, from very mundane to more esoteric, you have something that's connecting the will to the person or the object being influenced. In all these cases, some object is used to create a link that transmits the will of the magician for change to the person or object one is trying to change. Now it may seem that in the case of the resume or the pen and pencil, these are merely mundane, but anything may be used magically. One needs only to choose the right method and channel for the desired uh, change in at hand. So a voodoo, doll on, a voodoo doll on a door would not be a good medium for a job spell as much as a resume, where a charged amulet is exactly what's needed to keep malign forces. So it's really about specificity relative to the context. So the next principle is degree of intimacy. One of the key ideas in the magical link is that the closer the object is to someone's body or the depth of one's previous connection, the more likely you will be able to build a bridge to them to enact your will. This is why hair and fingernails are often considered potent vehicles for building a magical link. The idea being that if you've been able to get that close to someone, you've already built an energetic, energetic bridge with them. In effect, you've been in contact and are in a contagious relationship with them. This is even more true if we're talking about bodily fluids. To have had access to such things means you've gotten very close to the person at hand and thus by the doctrine of contagion are intimately intertwined. So in terms of like degrees of intimacy, you know, a business card, they've touched it, you've touched it, a piece of clothing, they've worn it, hair and fingernails, and then blood and sexual fluids. That's the closest you're gonna get to somebody and if you have those, they're in trouble. <laughs> Depending on what you're trying to do. Are you uh, gonna be, because we had a question over here, are you gonna be Yeah, there's gonna be questions at the end. At the end. Okay. Yeah. If I'm that's just super, hope, super hoping you can slow it down just a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, all right, degree of specificity. So, specificity is critical for influencing anything. Crowley unpacks this in one of his postulates of magic, writing, any required change may be effective by the application of the proper kind and degree of force in the proper manner through the proper medium to the, through the proper object. So propriety, or getting things right, is essential to effective magic. You need to line up the right actions in the right degree with the right channels and aids directed to the appropriate target that you are trying to influence. In the example above, Crowley mentions calling on the spirit of Venus in the case of a love spell. Of course, there are many other forces as discussed in 777, but the point is finding some appropriate energetic force that allies itself with the will of the magician and the intended act of change. So that's why you go to 777 on Venus on a Friday day, the color green, the number seven, building up your correspondences so that you have that diamond focus of intention relative to the energies you're trying to move. So, degree of allyship. 
This brings us to another point, which, which is that the magician's will is bolstered by alignment with outside forces. So in the previous example, the spirit of Venus is mentioned, and there are a variety of other allies depending on the operation. But the point being, there is some allyship or aid that empowers the magical link beyond the will of the magician and the object of operation. This isn't just calling on esoteric forces, though. For instance, in the case of seeking a job, it can be very helpful to use the content contact of a person in, in a company you know that can make an introduction. Similarly, in a relationship, an acquaintance that can help bridge the gap can also be powerful. The overall point being that the magical link is not necessarily esoteric. It's anything that helps you create that bridge. It could be very mundane. You can use mon Malkuthian channels, or you can tap very etheric or th chthonic forces. And ultimately, if you bring all those things together, working through all the four worlds, you're going to have more impact. So acquaintances, <laughs> friends and family members, to specific deities. These are all forms of having allyship and they bolster the power of the magical link. So degree of focus. Um, this is separate from specificity. Focus is in essence about coherence. Think diffuse light and the one pointedness of a laser beam that pierces metal. This can be trained in particular through meditation. Crowley says that most people are ataxic, which is another way of saying uncoordinated or even retarded. All their faculties are pulling in 23 different ways. You know, they use the example of, you know, the, uh, you know, the average human mind in, in, in yoga thought is like a monkey stung by bees sitting on a horse galloping at 100 miles an hour. You know, it, your parts are not aligned. They're not. And so a big part of what you're doing in both magic and um, in meditation is you bring yourself into one pointedness and you're directing that will down a specific path. And that's what this whole point is, is it's about focus. So Crowley in Libra Libre says, to attain magical power, learn to control thought. Admit only those ideas that are in harmony with the indesired and not every stray and contradictory idea that presents itself. And thus Crowley says that any devil that was a unity would essentially be a god or a coherent star that burns bright with a unique flame expressing its own distinct efficacy and potency. We may not like hurricanes and black holes because of their destructive nature, but they play a critical part in the order of things and, their own, and in their own way express an architectural perfection of unity and chaos. So, you know, what seems demonic in a lot of ways is its own unity. I mean, they serve a part in the divine play and they have a unity to them. Um, and so that's kind of the point of, the, of, 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 of this notion of bringing something into, a, into its own distinct monad and then from that having the power behind that to affect change. So Crowley mentions inflaming oneself with prayer, and this is another way of saying intensity of emotion and focus charges the magical link and builds the energy needed to affect the change in the object of the operation. So the chaos magic notion of gnosis, or putting yourself outside your own rational mind through fasting or dancing or self modification or other altered states of consciousness that intensifies and concentrates one force of will on the object is a good proxy. Intensity is another way of saying full investment of your total being in the object at hand beyond the rational and discursive mind. You need to, you need to get out of your own head to merge your will with the larger macrocosm to, do, to induce change. Mediocrity, comfort, and safety are often an anathema to the magician, and there's always risk and danger in the magical path. So, you know, this whole idea is that, you know, combining intensity, specificity, coherence, along with allyship, these are the things that kind of you're building up behind that magical link. So you can have built that bridge of the artifact or the object that connects your will to the thing you're trying to change, but you put all these other things behind them that gives them the push that actually makes them work. Um, then degree of repetition and duration. So repetition is about continuing to hammer away at the chosen desire over time. So this is the notion of continually trying over and over again against the object at hand. This is why candle magic spells, you don't just do it one and done. You'll pray consistently in front of a candle over the course of days because you're building up that charge behind the, the object of your will. It's not like you just say, I want to change something, let it go. You're continually building energy and momentum behind the, uh, behind the charge of the, of, the, of the willed act. So all of these, so just to kind of recap, so all of these are sort of the things that make a magical link uh, work. One is the physical or virtual bridge. So some artifact, whether it's a very mundane thing like a business card or you know, a fetish or a fluid, something that creates that link between yourself and whatever it is you're trying to influence. Then of course, degree of intimacy. How, how, depth, how deeply connected are you with that thing that you're trying now to bend or shape or move? Um, you know, if you've had no physical contact with somebody before, you're gonna have less, less influence over them than if you shook and shaken their hand. You know, sometimes magicians will even brush up against people because that's building a relationship in the aura. 
Um, and I'm not making any moral claims one way or other about manipulative magic. I'm saying this is what people do <laughs> when they're trying to affect change. They, and it's how it works. Um, degree of specificity, which is being very, very clear that there's different types of channels uh, for the magical act, and you need to be very clear about what you're asking for and not try to do too many things at once. It's kind of breaking things down into component parts. Um, degrees of allyship, which is how, how, how many forces do you have backing you up in that act? Like, have you called on a particular deity or god? Have you built a relationship with a person that's the intermediary that's going to introduce you to a potential lover? Like, how much allyship is behind building that bridge in the link you're trying to push? And then degree of focus, like how much coherence or one-pointedness do you have behind that desired act that's pushing the magical link towards resolution? And then finally, um, degree, well, two more, degree of intensity, like how, many, how much emotional investment is there behind that? That's why, you know, uh, when you can put yourself into kind of an emotional fervor, what Crowley says, inflaming yourself with prayer versus just like doing something very didactic, like I want to, you know, be rich. Well, there's no, like, why would the universe respond to that versus like, you know, you know, crying for a vision, praying, giving every bit of your blood to a, a, to a chosen spell so that that is being sent out into the universe with such fervor that it basically something responds to it. So this is kind of the degree of intensity and repetition. Keep hitting that over and over again so that you have that kind of force of will. That's why you do daily rituals. You're building up like a momentum and a consistency and a coherence that starts to have like a resonant effect with the world around you and then it starts to respond. So those are all sort of principles that drive the magical link home. And I have one more thing to share, but I, before I jump into that, I just want to pause because that was a lot of content and to see if there's any questions about that. <clears throat> okay. So the last part I'm going to share, and we're going to do our breakout groups, is how there's different strengths of the magical link that need to be created depending upon how close you are to the thing you want to change. So Crowley says that there's basically three degrees of the magical link. The first degree is one plane and one person. So this would be basically yourself trying to change yourself. You're one person and the one plane is you. So basically an example of that would be you could create a magical link where you want to change something in your life. You put a rubber band on your wrist that's really thick and every time you do something like you drink a pop, you snap yourself. So like, you, it's like Lieber Jagorum. You've done something, you've built a bridge between yourself and your will using a physical artifact, and who you're trying to change, you. So that's the simplest thing in terms of magic is, in theory, you and something that's bridging your will to yourself, a reminder, a rubber band, a thumbtack you step on, <laughs> something that you're basically saying to yourself, I want this to change in my life. So Crowley said that's the easiest bridge for the magical link. The next one that's the second less most difficult is one plane and two people. So this is where love magic or job magic comes in. It's you trying to influence someone else. So that is basically like, you know, what we classically think of a lot of manipulative magic is that you're trying to build a bridge between yourself on one plane, meaning we're all here together in this lifetime and we're all interacting. So that would be the second most difficult thing to do. The third and the hardest form of magic, and probably when people think about miracles, this is the one that I find really the most interesting, is two planes. So this is where the, the person doing the change and the object do not necessarily have any kind of connection, at least the way we understand it. And this would be classically what we call like things like weather magic or nature magic, when you're actually bending the environment, right? So the magician tries to enforce their will on the natural world to bend it in some manner. Um, and this is often requires some form of technological apparatus to bring it about. So one example in the case, um, Wilhelm Reich, he was this uh, student of Freud and he really believed that sexual energy was sort of the basic driving force for everything and that you could accumulate it in what he called an orgone box and that this could be used to do cloud busting. You could actually use this technological artifact to accumulate energy and that that could then bend weather patterns, right? So the point being is that that's a pretty big thing to do to change the weather. So you had to have a technological artifact to accumulate life force to make that change. Another example would be some indigenous shamanic people, they use crystals aligned in different geometric configurations 
with rituals to bend the environment and to basically shape their environment in different ways, whether that's in terms of weather patterns or bringing about harmony to the space. Um, so you're having, the point being is that the more farther you get from your own self, the more you need some sort of a technological interface to make those changes happen. You need something that really amplifies, it's about amplification. You need something that really amplifies the will of the magician the further you get from yourself. And in some ways you could say the entire, and people have said this, that the entire Western technological endeavor is an effort to, and we've forgotten that we did this, <laughs> but the early, the early uh, scientists were a lot of more hermeticists and magicians, and so they literally were trying to like shape the laws of nature with technology coming from hermetic and alchemical worldviews, and today, they're not, most scientists aren't thinking that at all, but the roots of a lot of early technology was very much rooted in hermetic and alchemical ideas that nature was being influenced by virtue of these forces, um, yoked yoke to the magician's intention. Um, so, so the further we get from ourselves, uh, the more we need something that amplifies the will to bring about these changes. So that in essence is, um, Kind of in a nutshell, what I was going to talk to you guys today about in terms of the magical link. Um